Hello, I'm Atuba George. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you today. You are good, Lord. Your mercy endures forever. Thank you for the glory that is being revealed through your truth. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, we are on the story about the young prophet and the old prophet. Now, I'm explaining something to you. That the young prophet did not receive forgiveness because he couldn't forgive him self. And now I want you to see something. You never read of any punishment being meted out to the old prophet. So the worst you see there, the old prophet, I want to read that to you. First, Corinthians, First Kings chapter 13. Let me read from verse, okay, let me just quickly read from verse 28. Then he went, as the old prophet now, then he went and found his corpse thrown on the road and the donkey and the lion standing by the corpse. The lion had not eaten the corpse nor torn the donkey. <laughs> Did you see that? A lion is standing by a human corpse that he killed and standing by a donkey. They didn't eat the body of the corpse. The lion did not go after the donkey. So something was going on there. What you find there is a testimony of God's presence and God's mercy. The lion not eating the man's corpse. The man was dead already. And then you find a donkey there that the man rode on. The lion did not attack the donkey. Now, what do you think happened there? That's a testimony that there were angels in that place. What does that mean? That also meant the man could have been saved. He died of his own ignorance. Irrespective of the sin that he'd committed, he died of his own ignorance. Now, you remember Balaam. Balaam had been contracted by the king, Balak, to go curse Israel. Now, he went before the Lord. Lord, give me your word to curse these people. And God said, I'm not giving him my word to curse them. You are not going. Don't go. He sent a message to the king. I'm ah, sorry, I can't come. The Bible said the king sent more honorable people to him. <laughs> so they came to him and said, ah, this is maybe the first time uh, the king sent his aides. But this time around, the king sent the deputy and the senior ministers of his cabinet. Ah, look, you must honor the king. Oh, God. Let me just go. And God said, go. And then the Lord says, it is only what I tell you that you will say. Yes, sir. I agree. Now, guess what happened along the way? He was going. Now, ask Balaam on that journey. Balaam, where are you going to? Balaam will tell you, and he is not lying. God has spoken to me to go and do what I'm doing right now. I'm going for an assignment. That's what he was I'm going for an assignment. Praise God. I'm going for an assignment. Did God send you? Yes, God sent me. Now, guess what happened along the way? An angel stood on the way with his sword drawn, ready to cut off the head of prophet Balaam. Now, Balaam was a prophet of God, anointed by God. But his head was almost cut off by an angel. Why? Now, what happened? What, what do you think happened in that? It's very simple and I'll explain to you. Did God send Balaam to go and get killed? No. But you see, there was a reason God was telling him in the first place, don't go. And, and, and we need to understand these things when we walk with God. God is not so disorganized. And we think it's when we shout to him that he organizes himself and does something about the situation. No. 
You see, when he went before the Lord and said, Lord, I want to go. This is what they want me to do. Can I go? And God said, don't go. You know the reason? Because God has already set the boundary of the protection of Israel. He has built an edge around them. And guess what? If you curse them, you will be cursed. It's as simple as that. Now, here's a child of God turning to the Lord and saying, can I go curse them? God said, don't go. Oh, Lord, the king has commanded me to go. God said, okay. So you don't say, I made you disobey the king. But... It is only what I say that you must say. I will say to it, Lord. Now, he went on that journey. And that angel came and was ready to slaughter his head. You see, because that is the angel that have been sent to protect Israel. He is not going to receive any word from anywhere to stand down. They don't stand down. Oh. Now, but because Balaam was, Balaam was going by the word of the Lord, so there was an angel with Balaam to protect him because he was running to that place by the word of the Lord. Even though it was not the will of God. So what happened? It was Balaam's angel that delivered him from the angel that was protecting Israel. Now, this is why I tell you, in everything you do, make sure you receive words from the Lord. You know why? Because every word God speaks, an angel is released to see to the fulfillment of that word. Now, that's the work of angels. Are these things too high for us? That's the work of angels. So because Balaam got words from the mouth of God telling him to go, an angel was released with him. So when he got to that border where Israel's angel came to withstand him, he would have been dead if not for the angel that was with him. So because there was a madness on Balaam, because he, now he is going, let me just go, because he was so, look at the money, the gain he was going to get. And it almost cost him his life. So it was that angel that was restraining the donkey from it getting into the way of the angel that was going to kill Balaam until God had to force the, angel, the donkey to speak and then he opened Balaam's eyes to see. Now that angel was there all the while but Balaam did not see it. Why didn't he see him? Because his eyes were shut. So if Balaam had died, one would say God killed him. No, not God. An angel struck him dead. The angel was only obeying its commands. Now, now these are ah, malaproshikete. These are things that, that they are so clear but people don't understand for example you read about daniel praying and then the prince of Persia, you know blocking withholding the angel that was released to daniel now people have always said, thought the, the prince of Persia is a demonic spirit you know we we have had those teachings you know let's cast down every prince of Persia over our land hey the prince of Persia was not a demonic spirit it was just an angel that was obeying orders see That's not what we're talking about. So let's leave that for another day. Praise God. So, so you see, this man had been told, don't go the same way. Why? Because, see, he, God knew that death was on that way. So God said, don't follow this way to go, but don't follow this way to come. So more like, look, death, recognize the shirt you're wearing. So it knows when he sees that shirt, it will attack you. So I'm telling you now, don't follow that way. Go another way. He would have saved his life. But you see, he disobeyed God. But then he was carrying on forgiveness in his own heart. He couldn't forgive himself. So if he, if he, the moment, now he had enough time 
to repent. He had enough time to cry to the Lord. From when the, the old prophet gave him that word from the Lord, he could have turned to the Lord. Remember Hezekiah? He turned to the Lord and cried to the Lord. What happened? Did God say, no, I've already spoken. I cannot change it. No, come on now. God sent the prophet back and said, go tell that king. I have given him 15 more years. That is God for you. He will do that again and again and again. If you die, not because God killed you, but because you couldn't forgive yourself. I, I've, I've seen lots of people in this. You know, the, the reason I can't have children, I, I know, see, I can't deceive myself. When I was in secondary school, I committed three abortions. So, so now, I, I, I can't put mouth in when people are saying, you know, God cannot give me children. Uh, no, I've killed the children that God has given to me. Who told you that? Who? Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall saved. It doesn't matter when or where he calls on the name of the Lord. He calls on the name of the Lord in the face of trouble. Salvation is there. And that's why I'm showing you this thing. There was an angel right there. And this old prophet, <laughs> praise God. Look at what he says. Okay, verse 29. And the prophet took up the corpse of the man of God, laid it on the donkey, and brought it back. So the old prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him. Then he laid the corpse or in his own tomb. That's the, the old prophet. You know, then you you when you're alive, you buy your tomb where they will lay you when you die. That's an expectation for death. And they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. And they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. So it was after he had buried him that he spoke to his son, saying, When I am dead. Then bury me in the tomb where the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the same which he cried out by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel and against all the shrines on the high places which are in the city of Samaria will surely come to pass. Did you see that? So this old prophet knew by the Lord that this young prophet was telling the truth. He came to do a righteous work. So why did you join hands to kill him? Why did you deceive him to his death? I told you what the reason was. God was testing this young prophet for the next level of his life. Let me tell you this truth. Beware. Beware of your present victories. Be careful when you celebrate your present victories. For it needs the temptation would come for your next level. Did you get that? When you see a miracle and you're excited, beware. Keep it humble. And open your eyes to look and see. Because in that moment of celebration, the temptation will come to test you whether you are now qualified for the next blessing or it ends here. To this man, it ended. And that's because, like I told you, he loved the Lord. He knew the Lord. No, no, he loved the Lord. He obeyed the Lord, but he didn't know the Lord. He wasn't mature enough to know the Lord. If he had known the Lord, he would know that the Lord would not speak through another means to him after he had spoken to him directly and telling him what to do. So listen, learn this. Hear the voice of God for yourself. It's safest that way. And the truth is, God is always willing, ever ready to speak to you. He wants to speak to you. So learn to hear the voice of God for yourself. And then this also, God will not speak to you through one means and change it through another means. It never happens that way. May God bless you this weekend. May the Lord open his hands of blessing upon your life. And may your eyes see good all the days of your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Have a blessed weekend. God bless you. Bye-bye.